and the trustees will be meeting at four o'clock. Um, I want you to notice the beautiful cornucopia on the altar. Uh, it's Thanksgiving. Where has the year gone? Where has it gone? Are there any other announcements? Yes, Laferne. Good morning. Uh, I stand before you today. Thank you so much for listening to me. One thing I would like to share with you is about our Jeff Preptit, the one Dr. Goel helped us with. Now, he is running for State House 59 in Nashville, Tennessee. So he is a candidate right now. Please keep him in your prayer because he this is a big fight. But I would like to let you know that maybe he will come sometime to speak with you about that. Thank you so much. Gosh, a child that a young man that's grown up in our church. This is really exciting. Are there any other announcements? Then prepare your hearts and your minds for worship. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all on this beautiful Sunday morning. Oh, I forgot that this cord is frayed. That's all right. Make it work. Ah, oh, it's good to worship together today. I want to invite us to, uh, to share together in some of our most ancient words from the book of Samuel, the second book of Samuel. Um, in your bulletin is printed... Um, the last words of David from Samuel chapter 23. And so I invite you to make your way there and we'll share responsively. If you um, used the QR code on the door to navigate to there on a smart device, or if you are joining us online, I invite you to make your way to our online worship order, which is a Google Doc that is linked via our Facebook description. Um, but make your way there and let us stand as we are able, friends, and share responsibly these, this beautiful song from 2 Samuel. These are David's last words. This is the declaration of Jesse's son, David. a man anointed by the God of Jacob. The Lord's spirit speaks through me. Israel's God has spoken. Whoever rules rightly over people is like the light of sunrise on a morning with no clouds. Yes, my house is this way with God. Yes, the Lord provides every one of my victories. But despicable people are like thorns. No one can touch them except with iron bar or the shaft of a spear. Amen. Friends, I invite you to remain standing as we sing together, as, come, as Phil comes and leads us. Let's work on sentence, word order in sentences as Phil comes and leads us in our opening hymn. Good morning, everyone. Um, as we are singing our first hymn this morning, uh, give you the opportunity to bring your mission offerings and place them in the basket here on the front. We will begin this morning by uh, singing hymn selection 131, 
we gather together. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and chastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. Though from the beginning the fight we are winning, Thou, Lord, wast at our side, all glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Congregation, escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Please be seated. Amen. I want to invite us into a time of prayer together this morning. I will open us with the collect of the day, the collect for Christ the King Sunday, this last Sunday before Advent begins. Um, and by the way, friends, if you are uh, a person or a uh, household who are interested in sharing an Advent candle liturgy this year, please let me know because I am still looking for folks to lead that at this point. There's my little plug for Advent. But um, at this time, let's enter into a time of prayer. I'll open us up with the collect of the day and then invite us into a time of uh, reflection and contemplation, a time when we might lift up our own individual prayers to God, either in our hearts or out loud, in whatever way is best for you to lay those at God's feet, trusting in God's power to... Uh, to work on our behalf. And as we come to a close of our time of contemplation and reflection and sharing, I'll invite us to share together the Lord's Prayer. Friends, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. on the camper.
And now, friends, with the confidence of children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I would invite us to share together this morning a reading from the gospel according to John. I am aware that this is the year of math. This is the end of the year of Matthew. But this is... Yes, Mark. Mm. It's not John's year. John doesn't get a year. And so occasionally throughout every liturgical year, we get to smatter in John's gospel um, in these fun places like Christ the King Sunday. And so we share a, a story from the Passion Narrative this morning. And I'll be sharing from the Common English Bible. If you have a translation in front of you that's a little different from mine, that is all right. Somewhere in between the words on your page and words on mine, there is a word that God will speak to us together. I will be sharing from the 18th chapter of John, verses 33 through 37. And in reverence for the gospel reading this morning, friends, I want to invite you to stand as you're able. A reading from John. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews. Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, my kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Friends, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I invite you to be seated. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So I want to offer a moment of confession. I'm of the persuasion that Pilate gets a bad rap. Not everybody feels that way. It's kind of traditional to blame Pilate for a lot of what goes on. Um, and that's bound to happen because in his particular cultural context, he is the representative of an occupying. He is the representative of a polytheistic religious structure going head to head with Jewish monotheism. So for John, for Jesus' followers, for all the 99% of residents of Judea who will not benefit from allying with Roman power, he is the face of tyranny. Whether folks receive that oppression from Rome or, or from their own local leadership, he is the wealthy, powerful, sinful foreigner in their land. 
from their perspective, that old winter Christmas season song is true. He ain't been nothing but bad. But Pilate isn't the emperor. He isn't even the Senate. Pilate is middle management. And middle management doesn't get a lot of sovereignty in decisions. His job is to ensure the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, which means squashing trouble as soon as it comes to his attention and giving the people their pacifying bread and circus. And Jesus is trouble. Listen to this dialogue, y'all. Pilate is trying very hard to get Jesus out of this situation. It's almost like he knows that Jesus isn't a threat to Rome. Like he's either a really good judge of character or he has already done his homework and knows exactly what Jesus is about. Let that sink in if you would. Consider that maybe, maybe Pilate has either heard full reports on the actions and the rhetoric of this Jewish prophet, or, or he has stolen himself into the crowd somehow and has seen firsthand what's going on, which is an interesting possibility. And which would mean that he had already gotten wind of the threat that the temple hierarchy thinks that Jesus is. Now, I'm positing possibilities. I know. None of this is in the text, except that for some reason, Pilate really wants to give Jesus an out. And as the person whose responsibility it is to nip even the hint of rebellion against Rome in the bud, his behavior here says a lot about what he thinks of Jesus. But it turns out, he's very wrong. By the time Rome comes around, every government in the known world is organized around the principle of gaining and maintaining power. There's a chance that even in the days before the city-state, the days of tribal and familial communities, that might not have been the case. But those days are centuries gone by the time Pilate is doing his middle management. You know, Babylon, Persia, Rome, the Holy Roman Empire, all the powers of Europe that would colonize the world, all of our modern governments are founded on the amassment of power through violent means. And that's what we settle for. It's just the way it is. In fact, a lot of us celebrate that it takes force to make peace. This is, after all, the land of the free because of the brave, right? The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, right? Listen, if you're making those claims and you are trying to be a Jesus follower, you are in the wrong faith system. That is exactly the opposite of what Jesus says. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies and pray for those who harass you. Peter, put away your sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. That is more relevant today, of course, than it was even when I started pondering these texts earlier this week. The, the, the circus that is the acquittal of the murderer of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber in Kenosha, Wisconsin, 
testifies to the power of violence and evil that is deeply embedded in our systems of justice and law. Violence is never the way of Christ. Murder is never the way of Christ. We are called to a much higher standard. You see, a problem with Pilate, and it might be a problem with a lot of followers of Christ today, is that he never gets past the initial question, are you a king? And again, maybe that's because his, his hands are tied. He's embedded in a system that's far bigger than his own morality or his conscience or even his curiosity, which seem to be bubbling up in this conversation. But he doesn't have the time or the tools to get any farther than to ask Jesus if he is self-proclaiming as some sort of sovereign. So many of us never really get past that either. We may come to a different conclusion than Pilate does, but we don't let the answer change us. We claim the sovereignty of Jesus, but we don't let that sink in. It doesn't develop meaning. We, we write it down, we might frame it, set it on a shelf with the rest of our ideologies that we think are fun to look at. If Christ is king, then Christ is my king. Not just a king. If Jesus is Lord, then Jesus must have sovereignty over me. My will is no longer mine. My will belongs to the divine who is reshaping history toward a day when the wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together and a little child will lead them. My will belongs to the Prince of Peace who is redeeming every person and every system so that on that day God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. They will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. When we allow Jesus to be sovereign in our lives, we don't need another sovereign. We can't have another sovereign. We cannot pledge ourselves to Christ and pledge allegiance to any other power. Any other power is self-serving and fundamentally disinterested in caring for any other power or any individual that threatens the stability of that power. Any other power is only interested in empowering those people and ideals that help it maintain power. As soon as they question that authority, they're thrown away and discredited. But the Prince of Peace does not need to keep attracting loyal followers. The creator of the cosmos is sovereign over all things already. The everlasting Father invites us to choose between the temptation of temporary power or the justice of everlasting righteousness. Ours is not a coercive king, but a 
but a convincing, convicting king. And so the choice today is ours. And my sincere prayer is that each of us, in every decision we make every day, will choose the sovereignty of Christ over the sovereignty of evil, so that we can proclaim with David, yes, my house is this way with God. The Lord has made an eternal covenant with me, laid out and secure in every detail. Christ is king. Not in the way that Pilate can recognize, and not in the way that we elect or appoint today. Christ is not a king. Christ is my king. Because I choose the way of the Prince of Peace today. May it be so with us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would please turn in your faith we sing hymnal to hymn selection 2036. We will stand as we sing, give Thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks.
Friends, go from here, a people thankful for the reign of Christ. Go from here, a people willing to make Christ sovereign in your lives, in every decision that you make. And let the Spirit of God, through those decisions, reshape the world and bring the reign of God this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.